Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video. This time it's going to be another Mermail combo tutorial. This time I'm going to be showing you some variations of combos you could be performing to danger-proof your combo sequences. What I showed you in the previous Mermail combo was a two-card combo of Teus plus Dragoons, and it yielded a full six-card, you know, hand loop. It's not really a hand loop, because there's no looping involved in the combo sequence, but there's not really a better way to describe it without using buzzwords like hand loop because of dumbass windups from back in 2012 and dumbass gotems in 2010. But basically, you're going to be using a combination of Moulin Glace, Gumblar, and Cypher Lord Omega to take cards out of your opponent's hand. The previous combo I showed you was a two-card combo that did that and took all six cards away from your opponent, but I mentioned multiple times during that video, if your opponent is playing danger cards, then I believe I exactly said peace be with you, because you're not going to be having a good time. But what I'm going to be showing you today is I'm going to be showing you a combo that one doesn't start with Dragoons, it starts with Neptibus. And I'm going to be showing you the two different ways that you can perform this combo based off what extender you have that allows you to danger proof your combo to where you can take all five or six cards away from your opponent and basically they can't use their danger effects because you're going to be putting them under a Bistweller. But so, before I show you the combo, if you're new here and want to see more videos like this, I would implore you to press that subscribe button and enable notifications if you want to see more videos like this or other stuff that I put out in the future. I'd love to welcome you on board into the channel's community, as well as if you want to catch my live streams that happen several times weekly, there's a link to my Twitch page in the description down below. If you want to go there, follow the page, enable notifications there too to not miss a live stream in the future. And then if you want to hang out in my channel's private Discord server, there's a link, an invite link to that in the description down below as well but so what i'm going to be showing you is the first variation of this combo that is neptibus teus plus instant fusion but there's also different variations you can do involving monster reborn world Le legacy succession soul charge or aqua spirit as the extender because that changes a card in your graveyard around and while they are all fundamentally very different cards the world legacy succession monster reborn and aqua spirit version is, uh, is something that it changes the sequencing up a fair bit, and they do all function as the same sort of card because of how they interact with your deck's graveyard uh, and your uh, your board presence as a whole. But the first one I'm going to be showing you is Instant Fusion because it requires the less uh, the least explaining once we get to that stage. But so, you normal summon Neptibus, send Dragoons, add Dragoons, and then your Dragoons adds Megalo. And then you're going to use Teus, discarding Dragoons, and you're going to use Teus' effect. You're going to search Gund to your hand. And then you are going to use the Dragoons to add a copy of Neptibus the Atlantean Prince, a second copy of that, to your hand. Now from here, we are going to link away into Reprodocus with the Neptibus and the Teus, and then we are going to activate the Megalo, discarding Gund and the Neptibus. And we're going to summon the Megalo way over here out of the way. The Neptibus is going to target a Dragoons engrave, and then the Gund is going to target our Teus, and then Megalo is going to trigger, giving us our Abyss Sphere from deck. But so, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be placing our stuff on the field in ways that we don't want it to be, you know, messing around with possible zone placement. So we're going to be putting the Teus over here, and we're going to be putting the Dragoons over here. The reason I'm doing it in this way is because Summon Sorceress would be pointing here, and Reaper Dacus points here. We don't, want to, we don't want to mess up those zones. But so, at this point, we've got four Waters in Grave. So this is the easiest version of the combo to understand, which is why I started with it. So you're going to Instant Fusion for any level four Water of your choosing, either Mud Dragon of the Swamp or Rare Fish. Uh, Mud Dragon is better because it allows you to be already in your extra deck, decide things like Super Poly, uh, things to uh, consider. But so basically you summon this as to be a level 4 water, and you're going to go over into an Abyss Dweller under the Reaper Dacus. And then you're going to use the Abyss Dweller, detaching the Dragoons, that searches Moulin Glace because the Dragoons triggers, and then you have 5 waters in Grave, exactly to allow you to drop the Moulin Glacia. And so this is going to start taking cards out of your opponent's hand. If they're danger cards, they will not trigger. But so now from here, you're going to go Reprodocus, change type. You're going to turn it into a dinosaur to make the Abyss Dweller dinosaur. And then we're going to go into Summon Sorceress, jump over into this uh, extra monster zone for the sake of the combo. And then what we are going to do is we are going to overlay into Galaxy Tomahawk. Now this combo, this version of the combo actually goes into Cypher and Lord Omega, takes the full five cards away from the opponent on our turn, which is why we're okay with getting rid of the Abyss Dweller. But the combo with Aqua Spirit, World Le Legacy Succession, or Monster Reborn, or if you're just gonna Soul Charge for one, obviously you'd be Soul Charging for more, but just for example's sake, that one actually keeps the Abyss Dweller on the field, but only takes four cards away during your turn, and then the other cards away during your opponent's turn. 
This one takes five away during your turn and then one away during theirs. So what you're going to do is you're going to summon the Galaxy Tomahawk and then we're going to use the Summon Sorceress targeting the Galaxy Tomahawk to get a lion out of our deck. And we're going to summon it right here. And all the combos leave the Moulin Glacier on the field as well. So you get to kill your opponent next turn. That is actually pretty key. But so you're going to use the Galaxy Tomahawk's effect to getting the two tokens. We have the O-Line that we got from deck to be our level 2 tuner. And now we are going to go into our Cypherame Lord Omega. Omega Lull. Cypherame Lord Omega Lull. And then O-Line is going to activate its effect. We get to get a token here. And what I do like about this combo, even though it gets rid of the, uh, the uh, Abyss Dweller... You get to see what card gets banished off uh, Cypher and Lord Omega. So when it goes back to your opponent's hand, if you wanted to discard it with a, with a Gumblar during, uh, during your following turn, you know if it's a danger or not. So that's pretty cool as well. But so the O-Lion replaces itself by giving you a token. And so then we're going to start stepping up into some stuff. So you go into Nightmare Phoenix. And then we're going to make the O-Lion token into Link Spooter. And then we're going to go into Topologic Gumblar Dragon with the Summon Sorceress and the Link Spider right here. We are going to set the Abyss Sphere, and then we're going to turn the Nightmare Phoenix into Nightmare Mermaid. And then Gumblar will trigger, Mermaid will trigger his Chain Link 2, discarding a card. And then we're going to get the Nightmare Corruptor Ibli from our deck. And then we're going to draw a card, replacing the card in hand so we have a two-card discard happening. So we're going to discard two, and then the opponent is going to be made to discard two. But we're not done here. What we're going to do is we're going to put another card in our hand by uh, a rather rather interesting means. So we're going to use the Ibli to go into Mermaid. The Ibli's effect will trigger, and we're going to summon it to our opponent's field. And with the two Mermaids, we're able to now make a Kashik Magician underneath the Ibli. We want to do it over here because we don't want our Gumblar to go away. That's the entire point, right? And so now we have the Ibli in our hand, which means we have another card at our disposal. We've got the Moulin Glacia still just chilling over here. We're in good times. Good times, good positions. But so, we're going to go into end phase. During the opponent's draw phase, we're capable of activating the Abyss Sphere. And we're able to just summon any Mermail that we want from our deck next to a Link Arrow. The Gumblar will trigger, we'll discard one. The opponent will also discard one. And so, opponent has no hands. If that was a danger, it would trigger. But if it, you're playing against a danger deck, a danger deck is very much a deck that requires at least a three to four card hand to be able to actually make plays nowadays. So, even just taking the four cards away from them and leaving them just on like two, if that's like the only play you could do, is still super valuable. Even just taking away the five and not taking away that last card. If it's a danger monster, what are they going to do? Reveal it and let it discard itself and then do nothing? Right? There's not very many plays that the Danger Deck can do once you start taking it below three cards in hand. Um, like, it can theoretically make plays with only two cards in hand, but that's literally 50-50 RNG shot every single time. But I digress. As soon as the turn gets uh, ended, your stuff dies. If this was a Lind, you could also summon a monster from deck, uh, but you get your Omega back. And so this is literally game because you have a battle phase. So, very, very noteworthy. You've danger-proofed the first turn combo, and you have exact game on board, and you do have a battle phase this turn. You've got two 2800 beaters, a 1700, and a 3k body as well. It's very, very much game. Like, literally just these three are game. But so I'm going to clean this up, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do the combo with either Aqua Spirit, Reborn, or World Legacy Succession. They are all very different cards in terms of how they function compared to one another, but they do the same thing for your board presence, and it does change how the combo gets to be performed. So... I will show that to you right now. Alright, so now I'm going to show you exactly what I told you I was going to show you. This time I've got Aqua Spirit in hand, but functionally this is the exact same as if you had Monster Reborn, World Legacy Succession, or any other, like, card that just removes a card from Grave to summon it or whatever. Like, I don't know, there's, there's a lot of different cards that could function in ways that are what I'm looking for that I just don't remember in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, there may be another level 4 water that could function the exact same way as Instant Fusion did in the previous combo, but I just cannot remember for the life of me what it could be. <laughs> but even even if I did remember it, it might not even be worth play, but so there's that. But so, this is going to start the exact same way as the previous combo. We're going to use Neptibus, Sin Dragoons, Add Dragoons, Dragoons adds Megalo. We're going to use the Teus, discarding Dragoons, putting it somewhere on the board. The placement is not important until after we get to the Reaper Dacus. We're going to add the Gund off the Teus, and then the Dragoons is going to add another copy of Neptibus. And then what we are going to do is go into the Reaper Dacus, and then placement starts mattering. 
But so now from here, we're going to reveal the Megalo. We're going to discard the Neptibus and the Gund. And we're going to summon the Megalo over here. And now this is going to be very different in terms of what we're doing from the previous combo sequence. So, Gund is going to trigger and Megalo is going to trigger. Gund is going to bring back the Taos. And the Megalo is going to give us the Abyss Sphere. But what we're going to do is we're going to summon the, uh, the Taos underneath the Reaper Dacus. And so, then we are going to use the Dragoons over here. And so, what it's going to allow us to do is that it's going to allow us to get our graveyard to the right number of cards. Because Monster Reborn, Succession, and Aqua Spirit will all put a level 4 water on our field in the form of the second Dragoons that's in our grave. But it removes a water from our graveyard as well. So, we need to account for that. So, basically, we need to get to a point where we're ready to go for an Abyss Dweller. But then we have to have 6 waters in grave for either Aqua Spirit to be summoned, we're at 5, or you Reborn whatever your uh, dragoon whatever card you're using to reborn dragoons and then you put yourself at five waters and do that uh, so basically it's just how we need things to go but so what we're going to do is we are going to use the reproducus to change the types and we are going to make the Taos a dinosaur and then we are going to go into summon sorceress with the reproducus and the Taos over here and we are going to go ahead and use Summon Sorceress targeting the uh, the Abyss Megalo. And this is a couple. There's a couple different ways that you could perform this. You could have like summoned Aqua Spirit and then linked away with it, and then used uh, the uh, Summon Sorceress to get another Dragoons out of deck and overlaid with both of them. Same sort of result, but this is one I just like a bit better in terms of uh, it. Just like uh, it just it gets more of these big dudes out of your deck for access later if you wanted them. I'd rather keep Dragoons in my deck, if I'm honest, you know, to top deck like another Abyss, uh, Neptibus, and be able to send one, add one, do searching, stuff like that, you know, just little things. But regardless, you're going to summon this, and then you're going to just overlay it into the Galaxy Tomahawk just to get it out of the way of the, uh, of the Link Zone that it's taken up. And now, what we're at is we're at five waters in Grave. And so this is the point where, if this was Reborn, you would Reborn your Dragoons. If it was Succession, you'd Reborn your Dragoons. And then you'd overlay into Dweller, detach one, and then you're back at five. Same sort of deal happens with the Aqua Spirit. You're just removing a card from Grave to summon a card from your hand. So you're always trading a card in your hand for a level four water monster on board, and it always ends up at the same numbers of cards in your grave. Um, whether you're using a Reborn spell or if you're using the Aqua Spirit. So, you make the Abyss Dweller, you detach the Dragoons, Dragoons triggers, search the Moon Glacier, your Dweller is active, and now you've got five waters in grave exactly so you special the moon glaze now this combo does not take five cards out of your opponent's hand on your turn it only takes four but you get to keep the abyss dweller and so that's what differentiates this from the previous combo so you're going to use the galaxy tomahawk unless you wanted to get rid of the moon glaze under in the dweller for like a proxy dragon or something here to get the extra token to link further with you could very 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 much do that right but if you want to, you can just keep the Dweller. And I prefer to keep the Dweller because, again, it keeps this on the board. And this means that you get to kill your opponent the next turn. So, I like those plays. So, what we're going to be doing is that we are going to use the two cards here to make the Nightmare Phoenix. Then we're going to link the token into Link Spider, which makes it an effect monster. And then we're going to go into Topologic Gumblar Dragon right here. I'm going to set the Abyss Sphere. And then we're going to turn the Nightmare Phoenix into Nightmare Mermaid. Mermaid will trigger, discarding a card, summoning the Ibli from our deck, and then we will draw a card to replace the second card in our hand, and then we will discard two off the Gumblar. Opponent will be forced to discard two as well, and then we get to do the exact same thing. Now, this is only a discard five. Uh, that is also another way that it changes uh, versus the Instant Fusion version. In the Instant Fusion version is just by far the superior version because it takes six cards away from your opponent, takes five during your turn, uh, does all this extra stuff. This version only takes away five cards from your opponent's hand unless you had a card like Salvage that you saw that I was holding but I'm not activating it. That puts that one extra card in your hand that you would need to get to the... Uh, to get to the the six card uh, taken away from your opponent, uh, but so what you end up here with is you end up with the Dweller, the Gumblar, the Kashik, and the Moulin Glace. You put the Ibli back into your hand, and you've got the Sphere set. 
So you pass your turn. During your opponent's draw phase, you will activate the Abyss Dweller and then activate the Abyss Sphere. And then you will just summon a Mermail Dude Man from your deck. Both your zones in this situation that you could summon to are Link Arrowed Zones. And so you'll just discard a card out of your opponent's hands off of the Gumblar. And now if it is a Danger deck, which is what you are specifically doing this against, you're specifically doing it against this deck because you know it's a Danger deck, right? Or because you think that it's a Danger deck. And if you see that it's Danger cards, then you get rewarded, right? But so at this point, your opponent has one card in hand. And they're under Dweller for the entire turn. So even if they had multiple cards, they would still be under Dweller. Now the only real card they could have to make a comeback from this would be Soul Charge. Honestly. That's really the only thing that they could have. Uh, Soul Charge or something to just give them a bunch of extra cards, but the only card that exists like that that I can think of is Soul Charge. <laughs> so, uh, things of note. If it was like Danger Thunder Dragon, it could probably also be Brilliant Fusion, because Brilliant Fusion would send Snow, summon a dude. Um, but then Snow couldn't activate its effect because they're under Abyss Dweller. So no, that's not even, a f that's not even an out. That's not even a factor. Uh, but so, basically, this is, this is all real nice. This is all real nice, because this is also by the way, just happens to be game on board, in case you didn't notice. It's a 3k body, 2800 body, turn ends, this dies, if this was Lind, it could have summoned something from deck, just for argument's sake, so you have more game, but even without the Lind, you have game on board, because this is 3k, this is 58, and then these two are 34, so this is 64 plus 28, so like 80, 84, 92, is that right? Sounds about right. Sounds close, but anyway, so both of these plays put your opponent under Dweller and take five to six cards away from them, uh, and they, they both keep the Mooling Glaze on the field, and the Instant Fusion version has a floating Omega that's coming back too, so like, that's really cool. I really like that one. I wish there were more cards I can think of that operate like Instant Fusion, that just summon a level four water from your hand, but the only other one I can think of is like, like I think it's like... Uh, white stingray or something like that it's a level four that can summon itself from your hand but then for the rest of the turn you can't summon monsters from your hand so that cucks your mooling glaze yeah and we don't want that but so there's there's a few different things that you can go down in terms of routes in terms of trying to build this around i need to start theorying for other cards that do what instant fusion does and see if i can find any basically brilliant fusion might also be uh one of the cards that can uh can facilitate this combo as well with the instant fusion method because you can summon the level 4 water, and then your uh, your summon sorceress can just get another Dragoons from your deck and stuff like that. That's something I also should experiment with and see if that works. And if it does, maybe I'll make a video on it. Who knows? But anyway, that is all I wanted to show you for this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. As per usual, like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Like I said, if you're new here, I'd love to welcome you on board. If you want to see more videos like this and some other stuff that I've got in the works, then I would love to welcome you to the channel's community. Links to my Twitch page and the channel's Discord server are in the description down below and all that sort of nonsense. But thank you so much for watching as I've already said. Thanks for your time as usual guys. Again, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below and take care. I'll see you in the next video.